Hello, and welcome to the Cave Story Tribute Site Forum's official Cave Story Modding Guide video, or CSTSF CSMGV for short. If you're watching this, it may mean that you are interested in making a Cave Story mod of your own. If so, good for you! Before I even begin to talk about modding, though, I'd like to say a few things. Number one, modding is hard. Not so much in the technical sense of requiring someone really smart to do it, but hard in that it takes a lot of effort to make something good. 99% of all mods are abandoned and unfinished because they just got too ambitious. Start small, start simple, and most importantly, have fun. Number two, nobody is going to make your mod for you. The Cave Story modding community is not a large one, and typically anyone with the skills to contribute to a mod is already working on one. Thus, if you come out saying that you have an idea for the best mod ever, and need a team of a dozen supporting artists and scriptwriters, you should probably just get out. Mods typically work best as solo projects, or if you want, you can collaborate with someone you already know who also wants to make a mod. There are no handouts. With that out of the way, let's begin. To start, you'll need a fresh copy of Cave Story, the English patch, and Cave Editor. The first two can be found linked from the Cave Story tribute site, as you can see here. But to get the most up-to-date version of the editor, you'll have to go to the forums. Go down to the Cave Story modding general discussion, and click on the Cave Editor sticky. We'll be using .99D, the most recent and hopefully the most stable version. After you've got the files downloaded and unzipped, apply the English patch. Once that's done, there are a few things we need to do before we will be ready to start modding. First of all, the Dukutsu folder is read-only by default. To change this, right-click the folder and select Properties. Uncheck the read-only box and hit Apply. Hit OK when it asks to apply changes to folder, subfolder, and files, and then you're done. The second thing we need to do is make the images a little easier to edit. To do this, open up Cave Editor and load Dukutsu Raixi. Go to the Game Settings menu and check the Remove C Pixel Requirement box, as well as changing the image extension from PBM to BMP. Hit OK, then save and close Cave Editor. All the images in the data folder should be bitmaps, ready to be edited with your favorite image editing application. It's worth noting that many of the bitmaps Cave Story uses are 4 or 8-bit, meaning they use an indexed color palette. If you're using MS Paint and don't know how to change the image palette, just save them as 24-bit bitmaps and reopen the image to be able to use all the colors your heart desires. If you want to import your own music into the game, you'll need some more programs. First of all, to write music in the format used by Cave Story, you'll need OrgMaker, downloadable from the Tribute site. I recommend OrgMaker V2 for its vastly improved interface. To get the music into the game itself, you'll need a program called Resource Hunt. I've provided a link to the download page below. Open Resource Hacker and load Dokutsu.exe, then expand the org folder to see a list of all the different songs. The file names aren't exactly intuitive, so below I've linked a spreadsheet I've put together that has the song number, actual name, and resource name so you'll know exactly what you're replacing. To change one, open the subfolder and select Replace Resource. Select your new music, put org in the resource type field, Make the resource name the same as it was originally, and leave the language field blank. When writing music with OrgMaker V2, there's one thing you need to keep in mind to ensure compatibility. You need to set up the drums in a very specific order, that being Bass 1, Snare 1, High Close, High Open, Tom 1, and Purr 1. The 7th and 8th drum tracks shouldn't be used, as they will cause your game to crash. One last thing to discuss in this video before we actually get into some hands-on modding is the sort of things that you can't do. When making a Cave Story mod, you cannot change the behavior of the weapons. You cannot change the behavior of the enemies. You cannot write custom animations for the characters. You cannot add different tile types. You cannot change the physics. You cannot change the layout. Or at least, you can't do any of these things without assembly hacking. Assembly hacking is changing the actual computer instructions in the game itself, essentially letting you modify any aspect of the game whatsoever. There is extensive documentation on the case story executable, but I cannot stress enough that assembly is hard to learn. It's far beyond the scope of these video tutorials, and you won't be able to pick it up overnight and do amazing things like make the game two-player or something. If you are really dead set on learning assembly, then start small. Modify the jump physics, tweak the behavior of a weapon, Simple things to gradually ease yourself into it. Oh, and don't forget to make extra copies of your mod. Back up, back up, back up, and then back up again for good measure. The modding process is very fragile, and 
and there are umpteen different things that can go wrong and completely destroy all your hard-earned progress, so please be careful. That's all for introduction and setup. In the next video, I'm going to walk through setting up a simple map for your very first mod. Thanks for watching, and good luck!